Hello, and welcome back. This is Chapter 5, Video 2, where we'll cover some of the interactions between quantifiers, conjunction, and disjunction. Here is the first in a series of examples. All the cats are female, and all are striped. If we follow the pattern in the English exactly, we'll wind up with a conjunction of two universal claims, all x, fx for everything is female, and all x, sx, for all of them are striped. Now consider this example. All the cats are both female and striped. Again, if we follow the pattern in the English there, we're going to wind up with this. For every x, it is both female and striped. So we have one universal quantifier. And the parentheses indicate that the scope of that quantifier extends both across fx and sx. Now, question. Are these two statements saying anything different? If you think about it, you'll see that they are, in fact, equivalent. If all the cats are female and all the cats are striped, then it must be the case that all the cats are both female and striped. Just the same, if all are both female and striped, then all are female and all are striped. So we get the equivalence. Contrast that with this case. First, we'll have some cats are female and some are striped. That's going to follow syntactically similar pattern to this one here, except with the existential quantifier. So we'll say existential x fx, some are female, and another existential x, some are striped. You can probably guess what the next example is going to be. Some cats are both female and striped. And again, this is going to have a pattern similar to this one down here, syntactically speaking. Instead of universals, we'll have existentials, of course. So we get a single existential. At least one x in the universe of discourse is such that it is both female and striped. There's at least one female cat that is striped. Now, question, are these equivalent? Well, it's going to turn out that they're not. But there is implication in one direction. To see that they're not equivalent, Let's imagine a situation where the top one is true, but the bottom one is false. In fact, we could do it this way. Let's say that there are some female cats. There's at least one, so it makes that true. Let's say there are also some striped cats. There's at least one striped cat, so that makes that true. And that obviously makes the whole conjunction true. But what if none of those female cats are also striped? What if it's only the male cats that are striped. Then it will be the case that any cat that makes fx true by being a female will make sx false by not being striped, which makes this conjunction false, thereby making the whole existential false. And it will be the reverse story if we find a cat that is striped but male. You would have a true here, but a false here, since we're imagining only the male cats are striped. And that would make the conjunction false, making the whole existential false. That is to say, the upper statement could be true even when there's no overlap between the female cats and the striped cats. And that would render this statement false. So it's possible for the upper one to be true and the bottom one to be false. That means that we do not have any implication in this direction. What about the other direction, though? Suppose there's at least one female cat that is striped. Then the bottom sentence would be true. In any such situation, there's at least one cat that's female, 
namely the striped one we were thinking of, and at least one that is striped, namely that female striped cat that we're thinking of, which would make this true. So anytime the bottom is true, the top has to be true as well. So we do get an implication in that direction. Consider the claims on the right-hand side involving the existentials. In the top one, where the conjunction is the main operator, there is the possibility that it's two distinct cats, the one that is female and the one that is striped. They need not be the same cat. But on the bottom one, because the existential has the greatest scope, there must be at least one cat, parenthesis, which is both female and striped, close parenthesis. That's how we get the failure of implication from top to bottom. We could have two totally different cats, one being female, the other one being striped, but not have one cat that is both female and striped. Whereas that's why we get the implication from bottom to top. If you've got at least one cat which is both female and striped, then you've got at least one that is female and at least one that is striped. It just happens in this case to be the same cat if the bottom one is true. So the implication and failure of implication has to do with the varying scope of the existential and conjunction. That doesn't make a difference on the left-hand side with the universal because if all of them are female and all of them are striped, then all of them are both female and striped. The scope interaction between conjunction and universal is different than that between conjunction and existential. What this is showing is that the universal quantifier can distribute across conjunction and maintain equivalence. But the existential quantifier does not distribute across conjunction to maintain equivalence. But there is still this implication. Let's see another set of examples. So what we're going to do now is change all the conjunctions to disjunction. So in the upper left, instead of all the cats are female and all are striped, we're going to have all the cats are female or all are striped. Now I'll quickly make the same changes throughout the rest of these. So here's our new set of examples. Let's start at the upper right. All the cats are female or all are striped is pretty simple. It's the same thing we had before except with a disjunction instead of a conjunction. So we get all x, fx, or all x, sx. And down below, same thing again. We'll have a single universal quantifier and in parentheses have fx or sx. Let's get all four of these out and then we'll talk about whether there are any equivalences. Some cats are female or some cats are striped. We can have two existentials, some x, fx or some x, sx. And then down here we'll have a single existential, some x, fx or sx. Now if you look at the pair on the right hand side over here, we can wonder about whether there is any equivalence. We can give a quick argument that in fact there will be equivalence. Suppose the top one is true. That can happen in any one of three ways. The left disjunct is true, the right disjunct is true, or they're both true. That is to say, either there's at least one female cat making some xfx true and making the whole disjunction true, or there's at least one striped cat making some xsx true, the right-hand disjunct, and thereby making the whole disjunction true, or it could be both. In any one of those cases, you're either going to have the left disjunct here satisfied by that at least one object, or the right disjunct here, or both. In any one of those cases, we have at least one object that makes this disjunction true, and that makes that existential true. So we've established a downward implication from the top one to the bottom one. If we think about it the other way around, for this to be true, it must be the case that there's at least one object for which either fx is true or sx is true, possibly both. 
but those were the exact same three situations we described earlier for the truth of the top one. So we do get equivalence between these two. They are true in all and only the same situations, which also means that they'll be false in all and only the same situations. So they're equivalent. Now look at the left-hand side. This is going to be similar to the right-hand side earlier where there was an implication in one direction but not both. Take a look at the top one. For this to be true, there are again three possibilities. Either all the cats are female, or all the cats are striped, or both. In any one of those situations, it's going to be the case down here for every cat that it's female and therefore female or striped, or that it's striped and therefore female or striped, or both. So any one of the three situations that makes the top one true also makes the bottom one true. So we do have a downward implication here. What about the upward implication? To test whether there's any upward implication, let's see if we can think of a way where the bottom one is true but the top one is false. Here's a way. It's not the only way, but it's the most straightforward way. Let's imagine that exactly half of the cats are female but not striped, and the other half are striped but not female. So there's no cat that is both female and striped. In this scenario, this is true because for every cat in the universe of discourse, it's either female or striped. So no matter which cat we pick, one or the other of these is true, making that disjunction true and therefore making the universal true. But in that situation, it's not true that all of them are female, and it's not true that all of them are striped, so the disjunction winds up being false. So we do not have implication in the upper direction. So what we're seeing here now is that the existential quantifier can distribute across disjunction, but the universal quantifier cannot distribute across disjunction. This is all summed up in these general forms. Again, if we're talking universal combined with conjunction, we do get distribution with equivalence. If we're talking universal combined with disjunction, we get an implication in this direction, but we do not get distribution with equivalence. Inversely, the existential fails to distribute across conjunction, only implication going in this direction, but does distribute with equivalence across disjunction. partial explanation of the reason for this is that the universal is a sort of generalized conjunction. You remember back in chapter 2 when we were just dealing with three people going to the fair, we could say all of them were going to the fair by saying Anne's going to the fair and Bob's going to the fair and Carol's going to the fair. So saying all is like a generalized conjunction. If we wanted to say at least one of those three went to the fair, we would say Anne or Bob or Carol. And so the existential quantifier is like a generalized disjunction. And it's no wonder it distributes across disjunction with equivalence. So in this video, we have covered the interaction between quantifiers, conjunctions, and disjunctions. In the next video, we'll learn how to use quantifiers to translate categorical claims.